In a few minutes, we are going to start the next turn. So please take a seat and be prepared for the turn. Thank you very much. I'm really glad to meet you and let me ask you favor before we get started. Please turn up your cell phone or keep in silent mood in order to not enter other audience and the speaker during the talk. Thank you for your cooperation. And no more, if you have any question during the talk, please write them down on the sheet of paper you are given. After presentation, one of our volunteers will collect it to answer your questions during the Q&A section. So from now, let me introduce you briefly. Today's speaker is William Harris, and he will talk about healthy rescue energy. Please welcome today's speaker, William Harris, with a big hand. I think we're going to wait a little longer. I think we're going to wait maybe five minutes. Okay, so <laughs> just an appetizer. <laughs> Now on, let, let me introduce today's topic quickly. Today's speaker is William Harris. He will talk about healthy rescue benefit. Please welcome today's speaker, William Harris, with a big hand. All right, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank the GIC and all of the staff for putting together the GIC talk. I would also like to thank Chris for recording today's talk. Um, so today I want to talk to you about healthy masculinity and how the organization Men Can Stop Rape works to try to help uh, prepare young men and boys to be allies with women in the fight against domestic violence. So today's session, first we're going to do a brief introduction. I will introduce myself to you. I will also introduce Men Can Stop Rape and the Most Club as an organization. I also think it's very important to cover some definitions for you, some things that we'll be talking about. You may not know what these words necessarily mean. So in order to get the most out of the workshop, I think it's important that we know what some of these terms are. We would do two actual exercises that we do in the Most Club. The first one will be the real man exercise. This exercise will help us to understand the way that masculinity is kind of constructed as an idea. The next activity we will do is called the continuum of harm, where we will talk about um, different instances and different statements, and we will decide together as a group whether or not they're most harmful, least harmful, or not at all harmful to women. Then we will have a closing. I'll basically sum up everything that we talked about here today. I will also show you some pictures of some of the most club members. You also get a chance to see a picture of me when I was in high school. So try not to laugh too hard at that. And then of course, in GIC talk tradition, there will be an opportunity for you guys to ask questions of me and to have me answer them. So if that sounds okay, we can get started. Okay. So first, about me. My name is William Harris. I'm from Washington, D.C. in the United States. I've been involved in education for about five years now. I taught high school um, English in Washington, D.C. for two years prior to coming to Korea, where I, where I also teach um, elementary school English here in Guangzhou. My first job out of college was actually in this organization, where I was also a member of the Most Club when I was in high school. So that's a little bit about me. So the mission of Men Can Stop Rape, and that you will see that abbreviated is MCSR. The mission is to help young men develop healthier understandings of masculinity so that they can be better prepared to work with women to combat violence against women, specifically thinking about um, domestic violence, sexual assault, and rape. Okay, so here, who we are. Uh, here is our director, uh, Mr. Neil Urban. He speaks on a number of different panels in the United States and around the world. This is our director of youth development, my former manager. Here he is with uh, former Vice President Joe Biden and his wife at the White House. These are some 
young men who participate in our most club at the college level. So in addition to working with middle school and high school age young men, we also have most club for college age men as well. Here's uh, Jason Page again with some of our most club members in middle school. In addition to working with young men, we also have an organization that works with young women in the United States. This is the WISE Club. So not only do we want to prepare young men to fight domestic violence and sexual assault, we also want to help educate young women about the roles that they can play in also fighting um, this problem. And here is two of our um, most club members. They actually spoke at the United Nations in New York. Um, speaking out against domestic violence and sexual assault. And the gentleman in the hat is actually my younger brother, Aaron. He lives in New York, and he's a middle school teacher there. He will give you some brief slides to introduce you and get you accustomed to to see uh, what type of work we do. OK, so how we do this. So how do we try to combat domestic violence? How do we get young men to really think about, on a critical level, how they can be partners with women in the fight against domestic violence and sexual assault. One of the ways we do this is the Men of Strength Club, which is abbreviated to be the MOST Club. So it was founded in 2002. Currently, it's in over 150 middle school, high school, and college campuses in the USA. And our primary focus is young men between the ages of 12 and 25. Now that's not to say that we don't work with all men. I think that all men um, can play a role in fighting this issue. But we think that the, this age group in particular is a very critical age where young men really start to think about what it means to be a man. They're getting messages from their culture. They're getting messages from their friends, from their peers, a lot of times from their own parents. So we think that this age group is very critical in trying to start the conversation and trying to redefine what masculinity is. OK, so some important definitions. The first one, this is one that I'll probably say a thousand times before our talk is over today, masculinity. OK, so the dictionary definition is qualities or behaviors that are generally associated with men or boys. So an easy way to think about this is manhood, or what does it mean to be a man? Okay, so traditionally you hear things like, you know, you have to be tough, you have to be strong, boys don't cry. So these are some of the messages that men and young boys get as it relates to masculinity. So this is something that we'll come back to quite often. Next is an ally. So if you think of the term ally, you want to think about someone who is a partner or someone who helps or supports someone else. So the work that we do, the main focus, is preparing young men and boys so they can be allies and partners with women in the fight against domestic violence and sexual assault. Another way to think about the term ally is maybe in politics or maybe in global affairs. So for example, the United States is an ally with Korea, for example. Okay, we also have the dominant story. Now this one is really important as it relates to masculinity. So when you hear the term dominant, you think of the thing that's most prevalent. So the dominant story of masculinity are the ideas and the beliefs around masculinity that are most prevalent in cultures around the world. So one example that we use a lot is that in order to be a man, or to be a real man, you have to be aggressive. You have to be tough. You have to show your strength by exerting your power or force over someone else. So the dominant story is kind of like the framework that masculinity and manhood has been framed in historically. First image. So we'll take a minute and look at this picture. And then I want you to tell me what you think it is or what it makes you think about. Okay, any takers? Can anyone try to guess or explain what this picture may represent? Okay, danger. Crisis. Crisis. Okay, Columbus, all right. So it's very good that you actually mentioned Columbus. 
So what this what this picture is is an old picture from about the 14th century when the dominant belief was that the earth was flat. And so we think about this nowadays and you can almost think like wow, how crazy were these people to think that the earth was flat? We know it's not flat. We know that if you if you sail all the way to the end, you're not going to fall off. That's not how things work. Science has proven that over and over again. But, believe it or not, this is an idea that was actually believed. So, in the Middle Ages, which was a time period between the 5th and 15th century, in what we call medieval Europe, they had what was called the Flat Earth Theory. And this theory, just like the picture, people believed that the Earth was flat. Okay. So the same way that we look at this picture and think, wow, this is ridiculous, how can these people think this? You have to keep in mind that this is what was dominant. This is the dominant theory. This was the, uh, the idea that was widely circulated. Um, back then, in the Middle Ages, you could also be you know, persecuted by the church. We talked about Galileo and scientists and the church actually you know, persecuting people for saying ideas that were different. So flat earth and its connection to the dominant story. Next, we have the counter story. So the counter story, think about the dominant story on one side, the counter story is the exact opposite. And not only is it the exact opposite, the counter story are ideas that go against and even resist the dominant story. So back to the example of the flat earth, the counter story would be science. So you have all these uh, middle age or scientists in the middle ages going against this idea saying look guys no I've done the measurements I've done the science the earth is not flat it's actually a, a round object uh, we don't the earth revolves around the sun not the other way around so these are some ideas to prove the counter story so as you know this is what the earth actually looks like um, a globe, a spherical, a spherical object, not flat as the first picture. And if you take the counter story a step further, the Earth actually looks like this. So this was a picture um, projected by two satellites in 2015 that actually goes, which actually serves as a counter story to the counter story to show <laughs> what the Earth actually looks like. It's not a perfect round object. It's a lumpy rock floating in the middle of space. Okay, so these. Um, first definitions are the dominant story, and these are the ideas that are widely believed and held about a particular thing. And the second one I want you to keep in mind is the counter story, and these are things that work against and um, resist the dominant story. Okay, so with that in mind, we will start our first activity. So the goal of this activity is to help us explore ways that the dominant story shapes masculinity. So I will show you a series of images, and what I would like you to do is think about the image and how that can relate to what we think masculinity is. Once you come up with your word or your thought, just raise your hand and I will write your response on the whiteboard. Okay? So our first image, oh sorry, question. So again, what do the images say about the dominant story of masculinity? In other words, what do the images make you think? Task. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm a teacher, so we say say things multiple times. So the task, what I want you to do is to look at the following images and think of three or four words that come to mind. And it would be lovely if I could have a few people um, brave enough to volunteer their words. Hopefully this next slide is in. Okay, there we go. Okay, so take a minute, look at this picture, and then you can raise your hand and tell me the words or thought that this image brings to your mind. Okay. Serious. Okay, serious. He does look very serious. Doesn't look like he's playing around. So serious. Okay, in the back, thank you. Violent. Okay, very good. So violent. What else? Strong. 
strong. Okay, very good. Well, good for your good for each other. Okay, maybe America. It's not, it's not, it's not too far off. It's not too far off. America. Any other power? Power. Power. Let's take one more and then I'll explain this image. Okay, he looks very masculine. Okay, so he's manly or masculine. Okay. Justice. 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 Very good. Confident. Confident. All right, so we'll put that on hold for a minute. So this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Terminator, yeah. not the guy you want to mess with. So here we have a gun. A gun historically has been a symbol of power. If you think about the military, you think about America, you have this imagery of the cowboy who's defending whoever he believes he needs to defend it. And this is Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Terminator. Okay? He's also the governor of California, which is a whole other talk. All right, next slide. Okay, scary. Scary. Aggressive. Aggressive, okay. Aggressive. Hopefully you start to see some of the common themes that come up when we look at these images. Let's take a few more on this side. Warrior. 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 Very good. Warrior. Masharat. Martial arts. Martial arts, okay. Martial arts. All right, what? Uh, angry. Angry. <laughs> 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 angry. The veins popping out. Looks like he's ready to beat somebody up. Angry. Let's take one more and then we'll go to the next one. Future Intelligence and robot. Robot. Lower intelligence. Robot, robot. 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 Robot, okay. I'll put robot. Almost robotic, not not thinking things through. Okay, so who's this? Wolverine. This is Logan, the Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Kind of funny because this movie is out now. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> but um, this is a way to look at masculinity, especially when we think about popular culture, right? So men and boys, from the time they're able to walk and talk and think about the world, they're told that this is what masculinity looks like. You're strong, you've got a six pack, you've got veins bulging, you have angry face, and you look like you're ready to beat someone up. Next, any Mad Men, Mad Men fans out there? Most know who this is. What does this make you think about? Success. Dominance. Okay, dominance, success, very good. Money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> to, be a, to be a real man, you have to have money. It's very, very true. Yeah. These are the messages that boys get all the time. Business, business. Business, okay. Business. Arrogance. Arrogance. Yeah. Arrogance. Okay. Confidence. Boss, boss. Confidence, boss. 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 Okay, so this is Don Draper. He's the, one of the main characters a TV series called Mad Men, which is based in the 60s. And the thing about Don Draper and why he's almost a perfect example alongside Wolverine and the Terminator is because he is willing to do whatever it takes to be successful. So in addition to some of the words that we came up with, like violence, scary, masculine, aggressive, young men and boys are also told from a very young age that in order to be considered real men, they have to be willing to do whatever it takes to be successful. And if you follow the series at all, you know that Don Draper lies, cheats, steals, and does a number of other things that will fall under the umbrella of the dominant story. Okay, next one. Okay, this is, who is this? James Bond. James Bond. What does this make you, what does this make you think of? I saw him. I was Sex. Okay, we'll probably put that in capital letters. A lot of sex. A lot of sex. Ladies, men. 
lady's man, the charmer, okay? The, the idea of the Casanova. What else? Spy. Okay, he's a spy. Spy. Okay. Handsome. A few more, handsome. Any handsome? Okay. Arrogance, arrogance man. Arrogance man. Arrogance. Okay. Let's take one more. Misogyny. Oh, misogyny. I'm going to just put womanizer for that one. Is it? Is this another one? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so this is James Bond. And if you follow 007, this is like the coolest guy of all time. He has a nice watch, he has the fast car, he speaks multiple languages, and apparently he's irresistible. Okay? So I grew up watching James Bond movies and I always thought, man, look at this guy. He's got women, he can defend himself, he's fighting for his country as a spy. But the most important thing, one of the things that sticks out to me is the way that he interacts with women. So one of the other things, probably the most prevalent message that young boys get in relation to the dominant story, is that to be a man, you have to have sex. And it's not just sex, it's you have to have sex with multiple women, okay? You have to be able to be the charmer. You have to be able to get the girl in bed with you, leave her the next day, and find another one, okay? All right, so now that we've talked about the dominant story, and I think it's actually really good that we have some of these words. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the counter story. So if you remember, the dominant story is the thing that's talked about, or the thing that's discussed or believed more often. And again, the counter story are the ones that resist or go against um, those beliefs. So, next image. Oh, uh, yes. Let's say some of these words. Uh, male. Uh Having emotions and being connected to your emotions. Okay, very good. There's emotional. a word for it, but I can't, it, yeah, it must be emotional. Compassion. Emotional, okay. So you say emotional? Yeah. Compassion? Yeah. What else? Just throw them out. Caring. Love. Caring. Loving. Loving. Brotherhood. Yes. Brotherhood. Parents. Parents. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot coming from that <laughs> Parents. Openness. Happy Openness. time. Happy time. Time. Mm, openness. <laughs> Happy. Sensitive. Sensitive. Yeah. Wonderful. Soft. Soft. Very good. Father. Father. Nanny. What was that? Nanny. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. Okay. What else? Friendship. Friendship. Okay. Friendship. Friendship. Okay. Kind. Friendship. Kind. Soft. Oh. Gentle. Flexible. Gentle. Flexible. Okay. Connection. Connection. Okay, so we'll stop with connection. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit about these images. So these are also images of men. All the photos that I've shown you so far have been of men. The only difference is between the ones that the dominant story talk about and these other ones. So the question I want you to keep in the back of your mind is why images like these aren't necessarily celebrated. So I was preparing for this talk and I was on the inter internet and I was looking for these pictures. So I started off just typing man. And nine times out of 10, some of the images that were generated were more for this category, more about the dominant story. To find these images, I had to add other words like supportive or sensitive or parent or loving. Okay? So here we have a father with his children. Um, one of us talked about those being happy times. We also talked about kind, compassion, caring, loving. Now these are all terms that we would associate with the men in our lives, our fathers, our brothers, um, our boyfriends. But these aren't the images that men are being told about more often. And a funny story about this image here, this was actually published, um, I forget the magazine, but this was published a few years ago in America, and it caused a huge uproar, because here you have two men, and this is a very affectionate embrace. You know, we talk about brotherhood and friendship and compassion, and people were talking about why this image made them uncomfortable, because as men, based on the dominant story, we're not allowed to show affection. 
I'm not allowed to tell my guy friend, hey man, I love you. Or I'm not allowed to say, you know, I appreciate you. I'm not allowed to hug you. Because based on the dominant story, that's not what men do. Okay? Another one. What about these? Cute. They're cute. What else? Affection. Affection. Sympathetic. Sympathetic. <laughs> Touch. Touch. Caring. Touch. Caring. Caring's up here somewhere. Caring. Trusting. Trusting. Very good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Intimacy. Victoria. Victoria. Intimate. Okay. So I'll explain this this one here. Here we have an Olympic wrestler and his coach. Okay. So one of the roles that men play, in addition to a lot of other things, is the role of coach. And I'm very glad that we came up with the terms trust, emotional, caring, right? Because this is what coaches do. You know, I not only want you to be successful in your sport, but I also want to help you. I want you to feel that you can trust me, to know that I support you. If I think about some of the men that had the most impact in my life besides my own father, it's my coaches, okay? What about this one here? Mentor, mentor and believer. Okay, very good, mentor. So it goes along with the idea of coach. I guess this one was, this was what cute came from. It's very cute, okay? So as you can see, this is our list. On the right side, we have the terms that we came up with as a group about the dominant story of masculinity. So to highlight a few, we have violent, strong, angry, confident, power, aggressive, dominance, arrogance, sex, womanizing, misogyny. And then on the other side, the left side, we have the counter story. So these are words that come up that work against the ones on the right side. So we have mentor, friendship, kind, compassion, caring, loving, coach, parent, happy, sensitive, soft, okay? So hopefully this activity will help us think about some of the ways that the dominant story and the counter story work to shape men and boys' understanding of what it means to be a man, okay? So I have one more example, and this is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. The movie is called The Same Lot. I believe it came out in 1996, maybe, and it's a Okay, so it's a, it's a story about a group of boys who grow up playing baseball. Okay, so it's kind of like the classic American story of not only baseball, but friendship. Um, and it's set in the 1960s. And just to give you a little background about this clip, we have the friend group, who are the main um, characters in the story, talking to their rival group of baseball players who are more affluent, have more money, and in this scene, they basically go back and forth and salty each other. So let's just take a minute. The clip is about two minutes long. So let's just take a minute to look at it, and then we'll come back and share um, what the clip made us think about. Look. 
blood breath. Count on it, pee drinking crap face. Yeah! Let's go! All right, we can stop it there. <coughs> All right, so, classic movie, one of my favorites. Um, what are some of the things that we saw in this example? Shout them out. Aggression. Okay, we saw aggression, right? There was a scene where everyone, they saw the kids coming, they slammed their gloves down. Even the one kid that was like, what am I going to do? He saw all his friends going this way. And they were like, yeah, let's go to war with these guys. Okay, so we saw aggression. What else? Stereotype. Stereotype, right? So this is basically what childhood looks like for a lot of young men and boys. I think in America, in Europe, maybe even in Korea, some of these themes come up in childhood for young men and boys quite often. What else did we hear? Maybe discrimination. Okay, discrimination, right? So we have the two, two young men from rival um, teams, and they're basically insulting each other back and forth. Fart smeller, pus licker, you know, <laughs> nowadays the words will probably be a lot worse and a lot more vulgar, but did anybody pick up on the end all insult that was thrown. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Okay, you play ball like a girl. And it was just like, the world stopped. <laughs> Everyone was just wide-eyed, jaws opened. And you even see the kid who got insulted kind of like, you know, did a double take. Like, what did you say? Because for young men and boys, in a society where you have to prove your masculinity by being aggressive, by being strong, by being angry, the worst thing you can be is what? A girl. A girl, okay? So I think, historically, if you think about the dominant story, one of the worst things that you can be associated with as a young man is a girl. Because girls are, quote unquote, the opposite of these things. So I want you to think about how these influence boys but also, what message do you get as a young woman in society when you have instances like this, okay? So, for the sake of time, we're going to move on to our last activity. And for this activity, I want us to imagine ourselves on the Banks River, any river you can think of, okay? So you're on this river, and try to imagine this. You're on this river, you're relaxing, maybe you're reading a book, you're sitting with a significant other or your friend, and all of a sudden you hear screams. And you look over, and coming down the river is a person. They're in the water, they're drowning, they can't swim. They're obviously in some type of danger. What do you do? You try to save them. I think that's the natural thing to try to do. You try to save that person. Okay, so you run in, if you're a good swimmer, you swim, if you're a bad swimmer like myself, you try to grab something to pull the person out. <laughs> and no sooner than you get back on the riverbank and you get that person to safety, you look in the river and you see two more people coming down the river, drowning, going down the river. What do you do then? I'm trying to find out where they come from. What's the problem? Yeah. Who throws them into the water? <laughs> Bingo, okay. So I was gonna say, that after you rescue those two people, you look back and you see a hundred people coming down the river, okay? So with one person, you might be able to save them. Two people, you can be Superman or Wolverine and, and save them. But if you look back at the river and you see a hundred people coming down this river, eventually, you're gonna stop and think, what type of river is this? You know, what's going on upstream that's causing all these people to come down the river floating and drowning? So the same way we think about this river is the same way we try to encourage young men and boys to think about issues related to domestic violence and sexual assault. So you help one person and you get that person to safety, you give them the tools and the resources that they need to find support. And then you look back at the river and there are two people, a hundred people. So eventually you start to think about this river and why are all these people drowning in this river, so like, that was, so like was offered, you go upstream. So you want to think about the root cause of why all these people are drowning. And for us, at Men Can Stop Rape and The Most Club, we think that the root cause of issues related to domestic violence and sexual assault has to start with men, okay? 
So this next activity, it's called the continuum of harm. Okay? And if you think about a continuum, you want to think about a line that expands in both directions forever. So our task is going to be to look at the following statement and share if you think it is most harmful to women, least harmful to women, not at all harmful to women. So on the right side, we will have not at all harmful to women. In the middle, we will have least harmful to women. And towards the end, we will have not at all harmful to women. Okay, we also have the statement papers as well here. I'll grab those, but they'll also be on the screen for you. Okay? So, the first statement, remember we want to say whether it's most harmful, least harmful, or not at all harmful to women. The first statement, using alcohol or drugs to loosen a girl up. Take a moment to think about that. Most harmful. Okay, most harmful? Why? Why do we think this is most harmful? Mm -hmm. Okay. So using substances or alcohol to loosen a girl up is harmful to women. Okay. Any other thoughts? Least harmful to women. Okay. So we have least harmful. Why do you say that? Uh, because of that, uh, at least a little bit of uh, sometimes drugs and uh, a little bit of liver, uh, like uh, alcohol, is alcohol. But uh, the most uh, is not. Okay. Okay. So this is actually, I would say, what's most most of all widely believed. Okay. At least for the alcohol part. Alcohol helps us loosen up. You know, if you're going to a business meeting, you might have a few beers with the person that you're working with, or you might, um, you know, take your coworker out to a bar or something like that. Um, so for the most part, in our society, um, alcohol is used to help people socialize. But I think the part about this statement that makes it uh, most harmful is the fact of loosening a girl up. So a lot of times, we talk about instances of domestic violence and sexual assault, alcohol plays a huge role. Okay, next statement. Believing that a woman's place is in the home with the kids. <clears throat> Most harmful, least harmful, or not at all harmful? Most harmful. Most harmful. Most harmful. Most harmful? Yeah. Why? Any thoughts on that one? Because you're essentially saying that they have no other role in the world except to be at home, a wife or whatever, mm -hmm. that does nothing but be at home. Okay. Anything else? Not at all harmful to a woman. Okay, so we have one taker for not at all harmful. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Very peaceful. Friends uh, with his kids. Mm -hmm. Or her kids. Mm -hmm. World, world atmosphere. Okay. So this is kind of what, what women do, right? I think it's it's most harmful if you believe that the only place is home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not at all if it's, you think it's one of the many places. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so good point. So again, we want to think about this as a spectrum, as a continuum. Also, so, it depends on what she wants to do. Right. Exactly. Some women want to do that, right? So it depends, right? So if you believe that the only place that a woman can exist is at home with the kids, most harmful. But if you believe that you could ask the woman what she would want to do, maybe it would be not at all harmful. Okay, next slide. Blaming a woman or girl for being raped because she wore revealing clothing. Most, most, most harmful. harmful. Okay, so unanimously almost, most harmful. Why? <laughs> it's almost a no-brainer. Why? <laughs> That's the gross because sexually. Mm -hmm. so I think that's, uh, that's okay. So I'll show you some figures later, but I think this one is definitely most harmful because we have um, a term called victim blaming. Okay, mm -hmm. and this this idea says that you know had you not dressed a certain way, had you not been out at a certain time, 
this would have happened to you. So this is probably one of the things along with others that can be most harmful to women. Okay, next one. Believing that when a woman or girl says no to sex, you just have to push a little harder. Most harmful. Okay, most harmful, why? Because there's a no in that sentence. Because no, right? No means no, there's no, no gray area there. Okay, one of the things we also try to um, encourage young, young men to do is to look for like consent. And not only consent, but enthusiastic consent. You know, when, you, when you're with a girl and you guys decide that you're going to go back to your place or her place and watch a movie or whatever it's gonna, whatever you're going to do, you need to make sure that you have consent and also enthusiastic consent. You have to know that this is something that's OK. Because no should be, should be no. OK, next one for the sake of time. Honking or whistling at a woman or girl walking down the street. It happens. It happens all the time. We call it cat calling. What do you think? Most harmful. Most harmful? Why? No conversation I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with a... Because it's objective. Okay. okay, so that's a good word. So one of these, um, one of the things that this brings to my mind at least is an issue that comes up a lot of times is objectifying women. So when we see a woman that's attractive, we should never honk or whistle at something you do to like a dog or a cat. You should treat people like people. You know, if you like a young lady, kindly go up, introduce yourself. Maybe you want to go to the movie, you know, go for a walk. I don't think you should honk or whistle at young, at young girls or, or women at all. And actually in the high school setting, this is one that gets like the most out of the guys, right? It's like, oh no, that's okay, it's not so bad, you're just telling her that she's attractive, but it also objectifies uh, women. Okay, you say not at all? Okay. I'm going to ask the woman, you know, the uh, don't give, uh, as, what I say, what the attraction to the guys, mm. is uh, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So, my idea is not... <laughs> Okay. How about honking and whistling other men walking on the street? Yeah, so yeah. the counter story to that, how would you feel if you were walking down the street minding your own business and people were honking at you saying, hey, hot stuff, come on over here. You would probably feel a certain way about that. Whether the uh, honking or whistling, nothing will get happened. Well, that's so, based on the perspective that's you have. Not at all. Um, but it, it is emotionally insulting. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the intention behind that. And the more often it happens, the more damaging it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just come with whistling. Something else comes after that. Yeah. And we don't know whether or not it will. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, so that's what we're talking about. The lady <laughs> has interest in the pumpkin or the city. Okay. Otherwise, it's OK. All right, well, I'm glad that we're having this conversation. <laughs> For the sake of time, I'm going to reel it back in. Um, don't objectify women. I would imagine that if this situation happened to you day in, day out, year after year after year, it would become emotionally draining and something that you would actually hate to have happen to you. <clears throat> All right, the last one. OK, stranger rape and acquaintance rape. So stranger rape is defined when a woman is raped by someone she does not know. And, and acquaintance rape is when a woman is raped by someone that she does know. Most harmful, least harmful, not at all harmful to women. Let's try to think about these. Let's, let's, let's think about these separately. Yeah. Why she was yeah. sleeping? Let's start with acquaintance rate. Let's do this one. Where does this one fall? Most harmful. 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 Most it's whether it's happening to anyone yeah. is, is harmful. Okay, so the thing about this last card and why it was so um, why it's so interesting when we do these workshops is because the majority of rapes that happen 
are acquaintance rates. So I'll show you a slide of facts later on, but almost 90%, almost 90% of rapes that happen are the kind of account, uh, acquaintance rape. So it's, it's your friend, it's your coworker, it's, a, it's somebody that you know. It's, it's, you know, not to say a stranger rape doesn't happen, you know, you have the idea of like the guy in the bushes with the knife. Most times it's acquaintance rape, okay? So, I think I'm running out of time, but so just some quick facts. These are from the UN. Um, they did a comprehensive study in 2013. So nearly 85% of rape is committed by someone the victim knows. Okay. So this goes back to acquaintance rape. Worldwide, over 70% of women will experience physical or sexual violence in their lifetime. If you look more at this fact, 70% of the women that experience physical or sexual violence, most of it comes from a partner, so someone they're intimate with, someone that they trust. And the last one, estimated two, 246 million boys and girls experience some type of school-related mm -hmm. violence every year. So this is why at uh, Make It Stop Rape and Most Club, we think it's very important to be involved in these lives of these young people in school as early on as middle school, so they can start to um, think about these issues as early as possible. All right, so this is actually the staff of Men Can Stop Rape at the headquarters in uh, Washington, D.C. They were wearing purple. Um, so purple is worn during the month of, month of October to show support for um, victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, these are some of the trainers, Jason, um, this is our director, Neil Urban, so the staff, and as promised, this is my most club when I was in high school. I believe this was 2005. That's me there. <laughs> I said not to laugh too hard. So that's me there, and these are uh, some of the young men that I went to high school with, um, and I keep in contact with probably around 60% of them still to this day. Um, we definitely got to know each other a lot during our time at the Most Club. And if you would like more information about Make and Stop Rape and the work that we do with young men and boys in the US and around the world, I would encourage you to visit makeandstoprape.org, which is the website, and it's 2017, so of course we have Facebook. Go to Facebook, type in Make and Stop Rape, and Twitter, at Men Can Stop Rape. So thank you very much for um, participating in today's talk. I hope that you had a good time and learned a lot. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for um, attending this talk. Now we're running very low on time, so we are going to do a super short Q and A session. Uh, we'll take three questions. So um, let's give a couple minutes. Um, let's, if anybody in the audience has a question or maybe a comment to share with the rest of the audience, something that you disagreed with in the presentation, something that you want to um, emphasize, this is the time. I have a the, uh, commentary questions. Uh, don't you think the uh, the labor side, labor side, doesn't have any responsibility? He, according to what he said, all responsibility is on the men's side. And however, you know, the uh, too much exposure the court and stuff like that, it gives the chance to the labor to the labor. So, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So the question is, he is asking um, if only emphasizing the side of the raper is not good because there is too much exposure from the girls. Right. Uh, and should they have some responsibility on how exposed they are? Mm -hmm. That's his question. Okay, uh, to answer that, I would say, um, I think you have to focus on men. So the fact is that the majority of instances where rape occur, the, the perpetrator or the person doing the rape is, is the man. Um, 
I do think that your idea or your thought isn't something that's far fetched. I would say that a lot of people like think that way. They would say, you know, if you weren't doing this or doing that, this would have happened. But you have to remember that we're we're all humans and we have the right to express ourselves and, and do whatever we want. We're we're free as human beings. So to say that um, you have to think about the, the role that women play in this as well, I would say that that's limiting and takes away from the fact that the real issue is men being uncomfortable or men thinking that they have to be masculine and show their masculinity a certain way. So that's why we try to do the work where we help young men and boys redefine masculinity. We go back to the counter story. So it's okay to be sensitive, it's okay to cry, it's okay to show affection. You don't always have to be violent or aggressive. So that's everything for today, I think. I think you're okay. <laughs> One question. So thank you so much again for the speaker. And now we have some announcements by Kayan. She will give you some quick announcements as well as the talk for next week, which is related to this one. So you should attend as well. well thank you. Well. Thank you. I will show our appreciation to Mr. Schopenhauer, a letter of appreciation to Mr. Will Harris. We want to thank you for your uh, nice support to find the citizens as a guest speaker. Uh, Mr. Tasik, uh, healthy, masculinity, like uh, even me, like this. So, I can enjoy masculinity. Yes. <laughs> healthy one. Healthy one, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much for <laughs> nice, nice, nice talk. Thank you.